All right, here we go. All right, uh, good morning everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us this morning. Uh, my name is Kyle Tweet and I am the Communications and Outreach Coordinator for the Vermont Department of Labor. Um, I have uh, want to thank you all for, like I said, for joining us this morning for our second virtual job fair uh, for empl employers in the St. Johnsbury area. Uh, just give you a, a brief overview before we get started. We have a couple of really uh, exciting employers talk about their opportunities with us this morning. I uh, just want to give you a brief overview of what you can expect and uh, what to uh, what you'll be able to know kind of throughout this today and then kind of going forward. So um, on the right hand side of your screen, uh, you should see the uh, the Q&A feature. I do want to encourage you uh, to ask questions. We will we will hold uh, some time at the end uh, for you as job seekers to ask questions of both of our employers today. Uh, so please feel free to post them throughout um, this event today as well as at the end of the event. Um, so I'll be I'll be asking those questions, but I know the employers also as well will be able to see them um, throughout throughout this time the time that we have with you guys. Uh, I also want to tell you that this broadcast is being recorded uh, for and it will be posted on our, the Department of Labor's YouTube channel um, and links will be found to that on the Department of Labor's website. Um, I do just want to thank a few people today uh, for the for the help in putting this together. Uh, you know, like I said, I'm with the Vermont Department of Labor uh, working with the Workforce Development Division um, as well as as well as Creative Workforce Solutions. Um, and Voc Rehab um, for all the work that they have done in putting into um, the event today. Uh, so with that, um, you know, like I said, please feel free to ask questions throughout the uh, for, th throughout today in this virtual job fair. Uh, but I do want to just introduce um, our two employers. Uh, we have the Canterbury Inn and Eric uh, with Canterbury Inn, as well as um, Northern Vermont Regional Hospital, or as it's commonly referred to, NVRH, um, and Heather with, with them. So I guess with that, um, I, without further ado, Eric, I will, we can start with you, um, and I will kind of send it over your way. And if you want to unmute yourself, um, I'll, I'll pull your video up for everybody to see you. And uh, I guess, Eric, if you could just kind of t tell us a little bit more about Canterbury Inn and uh, who you are and uh, your role with Canterbury. Excellent. So again, my name is Eric Bach. I'm the owner of Canterbury Inn. Uh, we're located right in St. Johnsbury and we are a 42 bed senior housing, senior care facility. Uh, we're or a smaller group as far as facilities go with only 42 beds. We try to keep our numbers at around the mid 30s. So there's always, so it doesn't ever feel too overcrowded. Um, we work really hard to provide a home setting for our residents. And in doing so, we provide their housekeeping, we provide their laundry, we take care of all of their meals, their personal shopping. Uh, even though a lot of the folks that live with us are independent, it's, it's, us trying to relieve extra stresses in their lives, which which help make them remain independent a little bit longer. Uh, our staff is very is very family like with each other. We have three major departments: uh, the the care department, which gets referred to as the nursing department, even though we only have one nurse on site that oversees everything. Uh, everyone else, uh, so we have some LNAs, we have we have an LPN that comes through occasionally, but a lot of folks are care attendants, and we do our on-site training with everyone. So if um, so, we have we do have folks that come through that really would like to do something like that, but have no training. And for the right folks, we are definitely willing to train uh, if if someone is interested in in helping provide care for our residents. Uh, we have the the housekeeping or facilities department and their job is their job is very interesting. They uh, they get to do a lot of everything. They're in and out of folks rooms. They they spend time helping, you know, if we're transporting someone in wheelchairs, uh, but a lot of housekeeping stuff. We 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 work with residents, um, linens, th things like that, that they 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 work on throughout the day. 
Uh, and then our dietary service, which is which is a pretty busy department for us uh, because we we start cooking meals at six in the morning and folks generally leave that department at around seven between seven and eight o'clock at night. Uh, we provide three meals a day, snacks in between activities. A lot of times have um, food oriented uh, twists to them. So the kitchen is definitely a busy and, and exciting place to work and not it's repetitive in some ways, but in others it's pretty it's pretty different day to day. So as I said, everything at Canterbury Inn when a resident comes is pretty inclusive. We work pretty hard to allow people to remain as independent as possible for as long as possible. Um, for example, we have some folks who um, we have some folks who might need help washing their hair in the shower and that's all they need for help in the shower. So that's all we would actually do for them um, unless they unless they start to need more help um, because keeping their independence helps keep them strong um, and a little healthier for a little bit longer. Uh, so that's that's what that's what our care team does there. Uh, wh whenever possible, we work with families. Right now, that's been pretty difficult uh, because we can't have families in our in our building. Uh, but we work with families to make sure that they are providing the support that that their loved one in our facility is looking for or needs. Uh, so we we stay pretty close with everyone. We know everyone's family. They know us. Uh, we're, they're comfortable calling us. And that's 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 the important thing for me and and our other owner Debbie, uh, that everyone feels like we're a part of their family and we're there to help them and support them and we're going to help make the best decisions for them um, by providing good feedback from their doctors, uh, from their other care pro professional staff members, um, and, and that's that's our goal is to help people live more comfortably. Uh, again, it's a very family like setting. Our staff become very attached to residents. So um, so everyone is always looking out for each other there. Uh, and during during these times with our COVID-19 crisis in place, that's that's been very important for us. And um, I'm very happy to say our staff has made a lot of sacrifices to make residents lives um, better. And that's that's what we're looking for employee for in an employee is someone who really understands that we're here to help our residents. They're they're our customer in this case, and we want them to we really want them to be happy in their home, comfortable, and enjoy it. Not everybody who moves in originally as a resident wants to be there. Sometimes it's the families uh, that are sort of saying this is where you need to go. Uh, but our goal is to help them understand and help them feel comfortable and uh, grow grow into the facility and and enjoy it there. So being a, a, our, our team is pretty tight knit um, and we do a lot of we do a lot of in-house training to help people really understand our residents, our our flow of the day and 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 really just getting to know each person so that we can make their lives the best that we can. Uh, and that's a very important part of what we do. Right now, as for open positions, we we have something in each of our departments. Um, we have a part time position open in our kitchen, which we're looking at 15 to 20 hours a week. Um, the kitchen is 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 just that we cook a lot of food out of there. We prepare 50 meals a day, uh, even though we only have 46 residents. All of our, we feed all of our staff and any family members who might be there at any meal. Uh, so we we generally we generally prepare about 50 meals, 50 meals per sitting um, each day, uh, and we set tape we set tables. We have residents who actually help do some of the tasks if they're if they're interested in in helping with any of the functions. We really encourage them and support them in that process. Um, so we're looking for for some part time in the kitchen. We're also looking for some part time in our care department um, on the the nursing team. Uh, and that's uh, for right now. That's a temporary position, but we are we are we are pretty comfortable saying that that will turn into a a regular position, um, probably starting at a part time regular position and moving to a full time regular position. Uh, we have we we have someone who we know is going to be is going to be leaving us at the end of the summer. They'll be moving, so we we anticipate their role opening up and. We don't require any specific training coming into the into the nursing department. 
We will train you when you get there if, if that's what if that's what you would like to do. We have two levels. We have one level that does a lot of you know answering bells, assisting people, helping people in and out of showers, uh, maybe helping them get changed. And then we have another role in the nursing department that that manages medications and some of the more intricate details of documenting um, and the, the paperwork pushing process uh, between doctors uh, and other care providers. So but again, we train for all of those. So that's that's uh, right now a 30 hour per, per week temporary position and with an anticipation of it moving into a regular position uh, and uh, even more anticipating it being a full time position as we move into the end of summer. Our current full time position is in housekeeping. Uh, it's 40 hours a week. Uh, with our full-time positions, we offer full dental and vision insurance. We pay for that for everyone, uh, and we support you with AFLEC as well for short and long-term disability, if that's something that you're looking for. Uh, but our housekeeping position, it's eight hours a day, five days a week. We do look at every other weekend so that we, we try very hard not to have people working every weekend. Um, we make every effort to, to, to resolve that when we can. Uh, but in housekeeping, it's been pretty consistent. We can do every other weekend and we can we work out the other day. So you make, we make sure you get two days off each week. Um, and housekeeping is is a, is a pretty straightforward job. It's probably the most varied, even though the tasks are repetitive each day. They are different. They're on a different schedule each day. You learn the residents. It's 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 a social position as well. Um, a lot of checking in with with folks. We work we make beds, we change out garbages, we make sure that the, the, the facility is, is clean. Um, and right now we're doing a lot of disinfecting twice a day. We have to disinfect uh, the entire building. So uh, it, it's certainly a busy job. All of our positions keep you pretty busy, um, but they're but they're fun. And once you start to once you start to um, know all of the residents, it, it becomes very social uh, and you really bond with them and, and work with with them one on one. We work and again, we work as a team, so you might be working in housekeeping and you might decide, oh boy, I really like working with the with the residents and we're willing to cross train folks for different positions. That's that's something that's uh, been very helpful for us and we find that staff really appreciate it and enjoy changing things around occasionally. So uh, we offer that as well when when folks apply. Uh, if they have an interest in something else, we can certainly work toward getting into that role. Uh, let's see, we do, I didn't mention that we also in our facility have a full-time activities department. We don't have any openings in that role uh, at this time. Uh, our activities director is also our social worker, so she does a lot of, a lot of um, big picture uh, projects with each person uh, to try to make sure that they are adjusting well, that their family life is going well, their resident life is going well, and their overall health is moving in the right direction. So we, we really like to wrap around all of our residents, and that, that's what we're looking for, is folks that will help us, help us meet those goals and make our residents' lives easier, healthier, and happier. That's awesome. Thank you, Eric. Um, I guess just run one quick question for you before we kind of move on. Um, you talked about the training. Um, how long does that typically last? Uh, you know, I, I'm sure it varies depending upon position, um, but what does that usually entail uh, just from a, an overall perspective, especially for somebody who's coming in that maybe doesn't have the background or the training? So we find that um, with housekeeping, it takes a one to two weeks usually to have someone up and running completely on their own. Uh, the tasks are pretty are pretty straightforward tasks. There are certain things that we're not going to run into day to day and we would train as those came around. Um, those are more seasonal things for the building. Uh, so, but we anticipate usually after the first week, someone is sort of working a little bit more independently. There's always someone there with them. So it's not it's not too difficult to to check in or or get or get help with something that might come up that you don't know how to do or you're not quite sure if you're doing it the right way. Um, my theory is there's many ways to do something. So if something works best for you and it meets the goals, then excellent that we can work with that. Uh, the kitchen, it takes it takes about 
I don't know, I would say less than a week to a week to train. Um, not too bad. Uh, it's a little bit more repetitive, so it's easier to, to get things down a little bit more quickly. And there's always someone else in the kitchen. So there's there's always someone close by to help with the training and making sure that everything is, is going smoothly. Nursing, depending on folks' level of comfort and experience, it takes about two weeks to train um, for the, the the floor nurse position, which is answering bells, helping people you know get changed, doing a little more of the hands-on work with residents. And once everyone, once we find someone who's comfortable in that and doing well there, if they're interested in doing medications, we can start that training process. But we usually like to have someone working with residents for about a month or so before we really make a determination as to whether it's appropriate to move on to med training, uh, which is all done with our nurse. Uh, so so it, it, it's it, timing wise a little a little different. We do share our nurse with NBRH, so um, we have to we have to work around some schedules, but uh, that that's all been going pretty well and we have a very strong nursing team. Our, our core nursing team has been there now um, for about 10 years. We've had the same the same core group, so it's training is is pretty easy. It's pretty consistent uh, and they they really they have great information to give because everyone in all of these positions have been there for a while, so they really can give you information that will make the job a lot easier. Um, as opposed to the broader overview, which I can give you. Um, and I, I know when I go into a department to help cover, I, I'm probably not doing it the easiest way. <laughs> so um, yeah, lot, there is training and we're there to support folks. I'm there to help um, on a regular basis. Each department has a team leader who, who can support in training and then we assign a preceptor for everyone coming in as well. So there's lots of support for folks coming in to learn a new job. We certainly don't expect when we hire someone that they're going to know the, the role perfectly and we certainly don't expect someone to come in and know it overnight. We know that there are a lot of there are a lot of people and a lot of different things in their building and we have to work with that and let everyone adjust and everyone always brings new information, new ideas to us and we are certainly open to to incorporating those into our into our routines. Great, thank you so much. No, I think that that's great. And uh, we'll circle back with, with some more questions at the end, uh, but I do want to kind of move through and I think uh, uh, you very you opened up a very nice transition for me, Eric, uh, to be able to transition over to NVRH. So um, Heather, if you want to go ahead and unmute and Eric, if you want to mute yourself for just uh, a little bit, um, Heather, I guess if you got if you want to talk about, I know you have a presentation um, that you would like to show. So let me pull your video up, and uh, I'll I'll send it over to you to give just a, a brief overview of of NVRH. And um, if you want to pull up your your presentation as well, definitely go ahead and uh, and do that on your end. All right, thank you. Um, hi everyone, thanks for joining us today. Um, Eric, that was really good. <laughs> so thank you for sharing all that information. Um, so we're in Northeastern Vermont Regional Hospital located in St. Johnsbury. Um, so we're a 25 bed independent nonprofit critical access hospital. Um, we also have a lot of primary care offices, specialty and sur surgical services. Um, we have a newly renovated birth center, which is gorgeous, um, a 24 hour physician staff emergency department and we work really um, a lot and well with um, the community in all sorts of areas. Um, we're very ingrained and embedded in our local community. Um, so we have about 650 employees that work here at MVRH in a variety of different um, positions. So we offer a really generous benefit package for full and part-time employees. And the part-time employees are eligible for the same exact benefits as the full-time employees, as long as they're working at least 20 hours a week. Um, we have three medical plans to choose from, dental plans, vision plans, short and long-term disability, life insurance, um, free gym memberships, wellness reimbursements. We have a tuition reimbursement up to $4,000 annually. So if you um, come in and you um, find that you really enjoy, you know, nursing or anything else, um, you can always go back to school um, and get whatever degrees or training you are interested in. 
And we also have a student loan repayment, which is really helpful. Um, we have paid vacation time, which is a very generous package, a 401k retirement plan, employee assistance plan, and we also offer um, a lot of professional development opportunities for everyone um, who's interested, different career track options as well. Um, so we have a lot of awards here um, for NVRH. Uh, we have the PRISM Award for Med Surge. We offer really um, competitive pay rates and benefits, lots of room to grow, um, per diem rates as well. We offer shift differentials if you're working the evening, the night, or weekend shifts. Um, everybody is eligible for 401k, um, and we have everything from pet insurance to identity theft protection um, in our benefits package as well. Um, hospital bill payment plans and Verizon, AT&T, and cell service accounts as well. Um, so a, a few of our current openings, we currently have environmental services facilities tech position. This is a part-time night shift, so it's um, 7, 11 p.m. to 7 a.m. Um, and that is um, a few nights a week. It is eligible for benefits and it is also eligible for a shift differential, um, which is great. So you'll make extra money over when you're working your overnight shift. Um, we also have a head cook position in our cafeteria. Our cafeteria um, really is awesome. I don't know if any of you have eaten here, um, but we have a really great cafeteria. They really strive to use local fresh ingredients. Um, they are looking for a head cook. The head cook does a little bit of everything. They do cooking, um, cleaning, menu planning, food prep, um, serving when needed. So a lot of different options. Um, and it's a really good position for people who are interested in food service um, and interested in working in a hospital and um, really a lot of room to grow with that position. Our newly posted position is the Community Health Resource Center Coordinator. Um, so this is a part-time position um, and it is 24 hours a week. Um, this position is really going to be helpful um, working with marketing as well as working in our medical library. Um, really every day working with the public, working with the physicians, the community, um, very close with marketing for um, community health resources uh, within the hospital and partnering with um, different agencies around the state to make sure that our community is as healthy as healthy as they can be. So really great position there. Um, we also have um, oops, um, an emergency department technician and an imaging assistant. These positions do require an LNA, um, so a licensed nursing physician. Um, licensed nursing assistant position. So the emergency department technician is an LNA in the emergency department, um, helping all of our um, nurses and doctors in there, um, but also really helping coordinate care and um, working with the patients that come into the emergency department. So it's a little bit of patient care and also a little bit of um, desk work as well. We have an imaging assistant. This is in our radiology department. So this is, again, it's a hands-on position with um, working with patients, but also some um, follow-up with the communication with the doctors and um, nurses and also with um, doing some desk work as well. We have... Um, a few registered nurse position openings right now. Um, so we have an ICU registered nurse and we have a part-time or per diem position there. So whatever works best for your schedule. Uh, we have a birth center position. Um, we have a couple openings in our emergency department for full-time registered nurses. Um, that's full-time nights. We have one position on med surge and that's part-time. So medical surgical floor is um, the biggest floor. We have about 18 beds there um, and it's working with all of our inpatients. So that can be anywhere from pediatrics um, all the way to adults. 
and for a variety of reasons they're in. We have um, an operating room nurse. This is a full-time day shift, so it's Monday through Friday, and then there's also um, times when you would be on call, but it's um, Monday through Friday, kind of, I think it's like uh, day shift, so it's really good, um, and it's working with our operating room for all of our surgeries and day surgeries. And then we have St. J Pediatrics, which is a medical office, is looking for an RN or an LPN. So if you are one of those people that recently graduated um, with their LPN, then we are happy to have you at our medical office for St. J Pediatrics. Um, and that position is considered full time and it's 32 hours a week. We also have um, a opportunity in our specialty clinics for a cardiology RN working with our um, cardiologist and that's a full-time position and our women's wellness wellness office is looking for a medical office RN or an LPN and they are flexible on the schedule with that so it could be 32 or 40 hours per week whatever works best with your schedule. Um, and then we have some clinical positions open as well so what we have an audiologist, a behavioral health specialist, um, certified registered nurse anesthetist, echocardiographer. We're looking for family medicine physicians for corner medical, medical lab technicians or medical technologists, a nurse practitioner for our express care, an otolaryngologist, a pulmonologist, and an ultrasound technologist. Um, so when you apply to NVRH, um, you should always use the nvrh.org slash careers website, or if you just go to mvrh.org, you can always click on the careers button, um, and that'll take you through our application process. You'll need an email address um, in order to log in, and it's most likely how our managers will contact you. Um, you will need your social security a number and education and work history for your application. It's really important that you put down all of the work um, that you have, whether you think it's related or unrelated, because sometimes it could be related or sometimes we may look at your application um, and see something else that we have an opening for or an opening coming up and you might be a better fit for that role. Um, and then a cover letter is preferred so we know who you are and why you want to work with us and how you can make a great addition to our team. Um, and just make sure to make note of your username and passwords. You can always log back in and check the status of your application. Um, once you apply online, the application goes directly to the hiring managers for review. Um, and they are a little bit busy, especially now. So it does take them a little while to contact you. Um, so just be patient with us while we reach out to um, all of our candidates during our busy office schedules as well. Um, so if the manager would like to move forward with you after your interview, um, they'll conduct a reference check um, and you'll be sent information for that via a third party that we use. And then once the references are completed, the hiring manager makes a decision. If we choose to hire you, um, we would have you come in, sign an offer letter, and then um, we do a physical, pre-employment physical and the background check. Once those are both clear, you are able to start work with us here at MVRH. Um, so, ooh, jumped ahead. Um, we are on social media, so if you just kind of want to get an idea of what it's like to work with us here at MVRH, we are on Facebook, LinkedIn, Glassdoor, Twitter, and Instagram. Um, and we highlight our employees, our offices, different positions, what we're doing, um, and just some general information on what's going on at the hospital. And recently with uh, COVID-19, we've been focusing a lot on um, keeping our patients safe and keeping our community safe. So if you're interested in learning more about that, you can follow us on social media. And um, if you ever have any questions or want to talk about any of the positions that we have available, I'm always happy to talk. You can email or um, give me a call and there's my contact information. So that's all I have. Great. Um, let me just navigate back here and get everything back up, I guess. Um, if you'd like both Heather and Eric, if you'd both like to, please feel free to throw your uh, contact information into the chat, um, just in case anybody, you know, or any whatever number or information you guys want to use. I did put up the uh, link from the Department of Labor's website in the chat, just for anybody that's that's uh, that's looking. Uh, just that directs everybody back to both NVRH's website as well as more information on how to apply 
um, for Canterbury's Canterbury Inn's positions um, as well. So um, that's on our highlighted employers page. Um, so we have both Canterbury Inn as well as NVRH um, posted on that page. So, uh, but yeah, please feel free to post your contact information in there uh, for anybody that's interested in um, in joining. Um, let's just see here. Uh, I guess why don't we kind of move through um, and kind of move to Q and A. Uh, I think it's um, kind of that time. So I guess one question that came through on the Q and A, um, and I'll, I'll Eric, I'll send it to you first uh, since it was first directed to you. Um, you know, what's what's your favorite part about working at Canterbury Inn? Uh, the question is, is there any piece of advice you give to me as a job seeker um, who would be taking my first job uh, working with the elderly? Um, I'll, I'll hand that over to you, Eric, first, um, and then Heather, I'll come back to you to talk about some related things. So I've, I've actually been working with the elderly for a very long time. Um, I started my medical career actually at NVRH in one of the first roles there. I worked on med surge and then was moved into one of the first tech positions in the emergency room a long time ago. And um, I really enjoy working with the elderly. Uh, I worked for the state of Vermont for a long time, uh, working uh, with some community programs. I like the social interactions. I like history. So working with the elderly for me is really exciting. I spend a lot of time talking with them. I think probably 50% of my role there is really just talking with people and helping make things go e more easily, a lot of problem solving. So that's my favorite part of the job. Uh, certainly not all the book work. That's not as fun as I would like it to be. Uh, but uh, if you're working with the elderly for the first time, one of the things that I always I always warn people, they have personalities that are all very different. They're not all going to be like your grandmother. They're not all going to be like the lady next door. Um, we have we have folks who it ranges from the sweetest lady you have ever met in your entire life to the lady that half of our staff are sort of scared of because she's she's a little sharp. And, you know, for me, when I talk to both of them, you know, even the lady who half the staff are scared of, she thinks it's hilarious that they're all scared of her. And that's what she spends a lot of her time doing is just trying to wind them up a little bit um, because it's entertaining for her. It's fun. She used to be a nurse and she said, oh, I like to get the ones that look nervous when they come to my room. So I, it's it's really interesting about how everybody's personality comes together. And uh, if you're working with the elderly for the first time, I I always tell everyone you've just you've got to just a little give and take. Their cultures were very different um, when they were growing up. They they don't always we don't always see eye to eye on everything. And um, the way we interact is is a little bit different now than it was when they were our ages. So. Stuff is, stuff is different and you, once you get to know someone, it takes a couple weeks, uh, things start to start to smooth out and you really get to know where folks are coming from and understand why they have the, the views, the opinions, the thoughts, the process that they do in their day to day, their day to day lives. That's great. Thank you, Eric. I, I think that's a, a really good description. You know, I think it's funny how uh, everybody has different personalities, especially with the elderly. You know, speaking for myself, it's amazing the personality differences between my two grandparents. So I can't even imagine, you know, when you have, you know, what was it, 52 beds? You know, I can't even imagine when you have, you know, 40 to 50 people um, that are just completely different personalities. So um, that's great. I guess, um, Heather, I guess from your perspective, uh, you know, what what do you most enjoy about working on NVRH and, you know, particularly on some of the positions that you were highlighting, you know, what are some of the things that you continually hear from employees about what they enjoy um, about working with um, with the hospital? Uh, I guess if you want to unmute, I'll uh, pull your your video up as well. Um, well, I have been at uh, MVRH for about a year now, and I absolutely love it. Um, I love the people I work with. I love that it's different every day um, and that it's busy and also that it's a very supportive environment no matter which role you're in. Um, they really want to see people succeed. So if you come in, um, we have a lot of people actually. So we have one person that was working in access, which is um, kind of checking people in and stuff 
to the um, hospital and they really wanted to become an RN. So they went through the LPN program, um, became an LNA, became an LPN, and then actually it was so exciting. Um, it was about five years in the making and they actually became an RN um, a couple of weeks ago and passed their NCLEX. And now that person is working on med search um, and we supported that person the whole way. Um, through with you know adapted schedules, tuition reimbursement, um, shadowing, and so that was really exciting to see um, all that support and see their dreams come true, which was really cool. Um, so that's like that in every position here that we have at the hospital, um, and I think that's one of the main reasons I love it is it's such a supportive um, environment, but also we're here to help people grow. It's great. Um, you know, I think Heather, you talked a lot about the culture. Um, you know, I think, you know, Eric, you you had mentioned, um, you know, definitely having a, a family like atmosphere um, at Canterbury. And I guess if you can just talk about um, it kind of uh, expand upon that maybe a little bit and just kind of what the, the culture is there with the employees and maybe what some of their backgrounds are and just kind of overall, um, you know, who the uh, who your who your employees are. I know you mentioned you had, a you know, several long time um, people who had been there for, you know, m many years. So, um, you know, if you want to just expand upon kind of the culture at Canterbury. Okay. So, um, I, I guess right now, I guess a good place to start with is our, uh, for an example, our supervisor in the, the care department, uh, has been at Canterbury for, uh, 15 years, 16 years, I'm sorry. And her family was, her family actually opened the Canterbury Inn 32 years ago. Uh, it's been, their, their family had owned it from the time it was built until I purchased it in 2017. And she started in housekeeping. So she worked in housekeeping, she worked in the kitchen, and she decided she wanted to become involved with the, the care piece. So we sent her through all sorts of different trainings, um, with our with with the few LNAs that we do have working there regularly, uh, and so she moved up through just just like um, just like we talked about it with NBRH. You know, we try we try to be very supportive about people who want to make a change or go someplace different. Um, so we're very supportive to our staff in that situation. Um, our newest member in the on the nursing team has uh, been working with us now for six years, and she started in housekeeping. Uh, she finished doing some schooling that she wanted to do, and now she's working not only in nursing, but as uh, partly as as our part time activities director, um, doing uh, art, which is what which is what she likes to do, and, and that's what we supported her getting through. So, um, so our staff is very is very good. One of our one of our cooks, one of our head cooks, is actually a pastry chef. So lots of baking, lots of snacks, uh, and you know we we meet on a regular basis with everybody, a sort of a round table discussion uh, that always involves food. And we talk about what we're gonna do for our menus and what foods do we like this month and what foods don't we like this month. So we spend a lot of time, we spend a lot of time talking and getting to know each other and learning about, you know, what does this person like? What does that person like? How can we make as many people happy every day as possible? Um, so that's, for me, that's one of the one of the important pieces of how we treat everyone like family. Uh, really, just understanding them and knowing what they're looking for, and knowing what kind of compromises we can we can work with to help our staff meet their needs. Uh, one of our goals is never to make work the highest priority in anyone's life. Yes, we really want dedicated folks uh, at Canterbury Inn because we're working with folks who we really need to make comfortable and we don't like to we don't like to put them through tons of changes unnecessarily. Uh, but we also we also don't want anyone working for us to feel like we're pulling them away from their family. Uh, when we were not in co during this COVID-19 crisis, when we were not dealing with all of these restrictions, we actually encouraged folks to come in with their family. Um, we have kids being dropped off after school at the facility, we you know do snacks with them, and they they do little art projects or craft projects uh, that we have set up uh, with some of the residents. Um, we actually had one person who her her father was popping in uh, after after he went to Riverside every day uh, until his ride was able to to pick him up. So he would get dropped off at our facility. He would hang out. He had a few friends there. He usually got there just before lunch. We would 
we would have lunch with him and then you know an hour or two later we his ride would come and 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 take him home and we we try really hard to work with families to make to make working for Canterbury in as enjoyable as possible and um you know we feel like involving our families our home families with our work families is really important to make that happen um and and, and it helps residents understand us you know so if we have an employee who comes in really upset one day a resident asks what's going on they have a conversation about oh, well my this happened to my kids today or i'm worried about this it really helps everyone feel like they're supporting each other and it it creates a tighter bond and and it's it's been very successful for us so far That's great, Eric. Thank you so much. Um, I think that's a nice transition. Um, I guess, Heather, if you, if you want to, uh, let, me, let me back up for a second and say, you know, a, a lot has been publicized and talked about across the state, you know, regarding COVID-19 and the pandemic. Um, you know, you know, everybody's kind of talked about, you know, the restrictions and kind of the the difficulties that we've had, um, especially in the healthcare industry and some of the things that that you all have um, gone through. Um, I'd be curious to hear kind of what uh, one of the questions that came in was, how does your hiring and onboarding process look different now um, with COVID-19? Um, I'd be curious to hear kind of what you're doing for your employees, um, as well as, uh, you know, how like, as the question asks, you know what you're doing differently, um, maybe than what you're doing before. I guess, I guess Heather, if, if maybe you could go first on that, um, just talking about what NV, what all NVRH is doing, um, kind of amid amidst COVID-19, and whether it's for for its employees. You know, you I know I know you talked about you know making sure you know as a whole the hospital um, is looking at the health um, of the community, but particularly for the employees, and then during the hiring process as well. Sure. Um, so, wow, COVID-19 is still around. <laughs> um, and it is, you know, we've had to make a lot of changes here at the hospital. Um, we are fully open once again, doing um, all of our appointments for our patients. Um, and there have been some changes around the hospital. Um, we, everybody uh, wears masks all the time um, when you're in the hallways, common areas, other people's offices. Um, so everyone's constantly in a mask. Um, we do temperature checks every day on all of our employees. So when you come in, you get your temperature checked and then um, you get a little sticker for the day saying that you are good to go. Um, our cafeteria kind of used to be a place where people would hang out. We did bingo. We did arts and crafts um, in there with our joy committee. Um, and now, you know, it's not as many people hang out in there. Um, all of the there's definitely a lot less tables. Um, everybody is supposed to be six feet apart. So all of our chairs are six feet apart now um, at all visiting areas and it's only open to employees right now. Um, so we don't get to see the community in there like we used to, um, especially in the summer. We're really actually missing that right now because um, this is the time when in the summer we feed. Um, you can bring in school age children for a free lunch or a free hot meal. Um, and that's open to anybody from the community. So there's not as many kids running around in there. So um, it's a little sad. Um, but we also have been constantly in contact with all of our staff um, regarding all of the constant changes with COVID. So I don't know if it's, um, it, it changes every day. There's new information, there's new way of doing things, there's new protocols, there's new restrictions. Um, so we have Dr. Roos, who's our chief medical officer. Um, he reviews all of the information and he posts updates um, a couple days, actually Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. It used to be every day, but now it's Monday, Wednesday, and Friday um, with all of the COVID updates for everyone in our staff to see. And they can access um, our payroll system from home. So they're able to access all of the information whether they're working or at home. Um, we also have a well-being committee um, for COVID, so they are putting out information as well. That comes from our um, employee assistance program, as well as our staff psychiatrist and our um, chaplain on staff. So they're constantly giving us updates on how to stay well and how to handle everything. And they're always available 24-7 um, for people to talk to if they're having issues, um, especially relating to COVID. Um, we have a lot of 
uh, PPE. So we have actually um, scrubs that any of our staff dealing with patients can change into every day when they get here so they don't have to go home wearing their scrubs um, that could potentially be infected. So we have that and we launder them here for them. Um, so it's been ever changing. <laughs> um, everyone is really in good spirits. The community has been so helpful um, and supportive with um, all of our changes and, you know, all, anybody that comes into the hospital um, is temperature checked and they have to go through a series of COVID questions um, in order to enter. And we also have a pretty strict visitor policy right now. Um, you know, seeing with Eric, we just want to make sure that um, our employees and our patients are all safe. So that um, is a change as well, but we're rolling with the punches over here. <laughs> No, that's awesome. Um, I guess Eric, same question for you. Uh, if you get, if you want to talk about kind of what COVID nineteen has meant um, to you guys, you know, I know you would talk. You talked a lot about you know what it's meant to the community there, uh, but particularly wondering about kind of the employee impact um, and then any changes you may have you may have made to, to from a hiring perspective. So let so from a hiring perspective, let's start there for hiring which we have recently hired someone it's it takes a little bit longer than it did before we used to be able to because there's there's only a couple of us administrators that that make the, the hiring decisions um it used to be pretty quick now we do have to schedule a covid test for everyone uh and it just takes a little bit more time to coordinate that so we were lucky last time we lined up with one of the community pop-up sites and we got it done and we had someone started in in three days uh, but it's not always the case. Sometimes we need to schedule it with a provider. It takes It just takes a little bit more um, coordinating, but it's been a pretty smooth process. Uh, uh, so that's that's been good. We do run a background check. That hasn't changed for anyone uh, because it's a vulnerable population, but uh, we do the testing, the background check, and then we can make the offer of, of employment. When we interview, we do like to meet everybody and talk with them. We uh, we used to bring everyone through the facility and do a tour and meet some of our meet some of our residents, meet the staff. That we can't do anymore. We we don't have anyone in the building who is not an employee. Uh, we don't even have our regular volunteers anymore. Uh, at least for now. Uh, hopefully they'll be able to come back soon. We miss them. Um, but we meet with folks at the facility. We have an outdoor meeting space set up. Uh, so that they can at least see the building and and have a better understanding of how we might be set up and how things might be run. Uh, so that that's really been the the big game changer as far as hiring for staff. Everything has everything has changed. We too are in masks all of the time. Uh, we we screen and we are now a closed facility to everyone except for staff and residents. So uh, everything that comes in, if it it goes through a 72 hour quarantine process, a cleaning process. We have a, a whole decontamination zone that we had to set up for this. Uh, but when staff comes in, we've got a series of gates you have to go through to keep the public out. Uh, everyone wears masks. We do temperature checks. Um, if they're not coming straight from home, they need to bring clothes to change into at the facility. If they're coming directly from home. They can put on what's coming there. Everyone keeps separate pairs of shoes and stuff and a change of clothes at the at our facility now so that we can change um, if we need to. Uh, again, we're closed to the public, but social distancing for us is a little tricky. Some of our folks can't hear us if we're not within a couple of feet of them prior to us wearing masks. Uh, masks have been made a bit communicating a little difficult for us. Um, so staff is required to wear masks all of the time, no exceptions. Uh, but social distancing is a little tricky in our facility. Uh, for the first two weeks, we kept everybody separate. We made sure that we'd sort of isolated to the best of our ability with some of our folks who are a little bit more difficult to, to, to explain why do we have to stay in our rooms for a little bit. Um, we do cohort everyone in our common areas now, um, which, has, which has actually been going all, all right, better than we had anticipated. Uh, but after we got through our two week period uh, we have knock on wood no symptomatic folks in the building so um, so residents themselves are not necessarily um, staying six feet apart uh, but we're working very closely with our guidelines from the state to make sure that we're providing safe environment for them 
uh, and following up with resident temperature checks uh, three times a day before they come into common areas. Um, so it's it's been it's been it's been an added task and all of the staff have been really cooperative and and pitching in to help with those extra steps through the day. Uh, we now have we have designated uh, hand sanitizing times throughout the day where we announce for everyone and everyone including staff go to the nearest hand sanitizer or sink. We wash our hands. We count to 20 over the intercom. It's it's terrific. So um, so that's that's what we've been. That's what we've been doing there. As far as support for staff, we do understand it's been hard for our staff. They're very nervous. They know that if because no one in our building has had any symptoms, they know that if if someone does get symptoms or does test positive that, you know, it's probably a staff member who brought it in and that weighs pretty heavily on them. Um, it's not as though they would do it on purpose. However, we just don't know this. This this virus is is it's tricky. So even going through all the procedures, staff have been really good at home about practicing social distancing, wearing their masks in public. Um, we've really asked them to to please adhere to the, the CDC guidelines um, in their personal lives, uh, which most of them have been very cooperative and, and, and glad to do um, to support the residents and because they feel it's it's the best plan for their for their families as well. Uh, we to support staff have been helping them. We've got some folks that that if they can, with they work from home, our activities director, we've now set up technology all throughout the building so we can sign in and talk to people in every common area uh, through either speaker systems or um, projection screens, computers, um, iPads. We are we are we have definitely jumped into a world of technology that our residents have embraced and really enjoy, which is very surprising, but exciting for us at the same time. Um, we've been providing them all with masks to wear um, outside of the facility. Um, when this first started and daycares were closed, we uh, we offered to provide all of the daycare uh, for, for staff until all the long-term arrangements could be made. Uh, we have we are set up so food and supplies can be ordered directly through us for folks who are not who are nervous or not interested at and in going into stores or, or things like that. Um, all of our suppliers we've been able to um, to put place orders through them so staff can just get their orders delivered. We go through this, the sanitization process and then they take it home. Uh, so we've been trying really hard to to support our staff. We know it's very stressful and it's a big change. So. Uh, so that's what we've done and we did we do make we do have a plan we worked with an engineer we are able to set up a negative pressure wing should anyone um, become symptomatic uh, uh, with COVID-19 symptoms uh, and staff has gone through some extensive training we brought in a we brought in uh, a specialist from Boston to uh, go over infection control and specifically work with us on COVID-19 so we've been we've been being as proactive as possible, helping staff feel more comfortable with the process, the procedure and um, risk levels too. Uh, should something happen in our in our facility, which we hope not to have happen. We've we've definitely followed everything to the strictest letter um, in hopes of preventing that. So but staff has been has been crucial in that in that process and you know, we're doing everything we can to support them and and get them information or or help with any other problems that might arise that they that they would like us to address. Thank you, Eric, so much. Um, just kind of looking at the uh, Q&A, just had a few questions. Um, just you had mentioned background checks, Eric. Um, looks like somebody asked, I know you both do background checks, uh, but if someone were to have a misdemeanor from a few years ago, would I have the opportunity to discuss the circumstances and still have an opportunity to work for you? Um, maybe Eric, if you want to go first on that one. Sure. Uh, for us, uh, yes, we would have that opportunity. In the end, the state of Vermont is really who makes the final yes or no, but we discuss anything that's on there uh, and we we bring an argument to you if you are the right if we think you are the right person for the job based on the interview if you have a misdemeanor and it is not connected to a vulnerable population being um, being the elderly uh, is what they're primarily looking at in this the elderly and anyone under 18 if it doesn't connect directly to one of those two groups there's discussion to be had about it 
um, but if it's if it's from a vulnerable population, uh, we we can't. They won't they won't entertain the the the, sure. the appeal. Great, uh, Heather. Same question um, about background checks from NVRH's perspective. Um, yes, so we do background checks on everyone. Um, we do two types of background checks. Um, if it's best if the person is up front with us and say, says, hey, this might show up on my background check and, get, you know, um, the heads up is always nice. We take it on a case by case basis um, and um, go from there. It really depends on the position that they're going into and um, what the situation was. Um, but it's always best if they're um, upfront for sure, but we do look at every single one um, on a case by case basis. So I won't say, oh, well, we'll never hire anyone with this because you right. know, all the circumstances are different. Sure. Um, another question, uh, I guess Heather will come back to you on this one. Uh, do you ever offer per diem positions? Um, and I would ask the same of Eric, but Heather, if you want to answer regarding NVRH first. Um, yes, uh, we do have a lot of per diem positions um, and we even give a per diem um, kind of bonus for being a per diem employee. Um, and are listed on the website. Um, you can actually search just for per diem positions as well. So lots of per diem positions available. Great. Uh, Eric, same question uh, from Canterbury Inn's perspective. Yes, we do actually offer per diem positions. Generally, uh, we look at those as when we have a part time position posted, we will entertain will entertain that as a per diem position. We can't unfortunately do it with our full time positions because that's a lot of hours to to sort to mix and match. But if, for our part time positions, we we definitely will work with people for per diem per diem postings. Great. Um, and then looks like the last question that we had uh, from the group and I'll come back with a couple last questions um, as we wind down. But um, Heather, what opportunities for growth or promotion um, are there at NVRH? I know you talked a lot about the different positions and you know there were some part time roles and just some different entry level jobs. But you know for somebody that's looking to get maybe their foot in the door or just looking to get a start, you know in the in the healthcare industry. Um, you know, what opportunities um, does NVRH offer for for its um, employees? Um, great question. We offer a lot of uh, growth opportunities and um, promotional opportunities for sure. Um, if you get your foot in the door in, say, a medical secretary position and you really want to become an RN, um, we will definitely help you through that with tuition reimbursement um, and you know, as much as we can with scheduling around your classes and all that good stuff. Um, so really, there's so many different things. We have um, clinical ladders for registered nurses. We have um, lead positions, so um, clinical coordinator positions, um, supervisor positions. So there's always um, somewhere to go, um, and it really depends on your career track and what you're interested in and where you want to grow. Um, but we will always do the best we can to help you get to where you want to go. Great. Um, Eric, I guess uh, same question from from uh, Canterbury again's perspective. I know you talked a lot about the you talked uh, a lot about the training and then of course cross training uh, being available, you know, for different positions. Um, I, I don't know how many employees you guys have and kind of what levels of positions you have there at Canterbury Inn, but um, I guess if you can just talk about, you know, some of the career development and what opportunities somebody might have who's just starting uh, with you guys. So we certainly don't have as, as many opportunities because we run a staff between 20 and 25 people. Um, so we will bring folks in on, on an entry level with no training if they want to start somewhere we can get them in uh, again our uh, right now our supervisor in the nursing department she came in as a part-time housekeeper uh, with no other training she had never worked in any place but a deli before so it was it was pretty great to to watch to watch the process um, which i wasn't there for 15 years ago but you know re reading through and seeing how how she handled all of that was was pretty interesting um but yeah, we we offer we offer what growth we have. We do have supervisor positions. We, we refer to them as team leaders because we are a team. Um, and we so we have the team leader positions. 
Uh, we have some positions that are sort of a higher pay grade as you move into the, the care department uh, that that has a higher pay grade. We do offer we do offer supports if people decide they would like to get their LNA, their LPN or become an RN. Um, we, we certainly work with folks to help that process through. Um, we have one person we're working with uh, to help pay for that program. It's not something we can do much of because we're we're a pretty small employer with that number of staff, but we're certainly we're certainly able to work with folks and help them through the process um, to the best of our ability. Great. I keep forgetting to hit unmute on my screen. Um, <laughs> I guess just um, as we kind of close out, um, you know, with it being now just after the noon hour, I guess I would love to hear just some final thoughts, give you both an opportunity to just give some final thoughts as to, um, you know, I guess the last a pitch, if you will, on, you know, what it is about, you know, the business that makes it so exciting. You know, we talked a lot about the different positions that are available, um, you know, and the different opportunities, but, um, you know, since Eric started off, I'll let Heather, I'll let you kind of go first on um, just, you know, NVRH and so any, if there's any um, instructions that you want to provide them. I know you talked about the steps of how to apply, but, um, you know, if you want to just unmute and go ahead and kind of talk through, um, you know, any last thoughts that you might have for folks who are looking to apply for positions at NVRH? Uh, sure. Um, they're always changing. <laughs> um, so we have a lot of people, um, you know, that might have a schedule right now that works for them at nights and then, you know, something happens and they need to work days. So we'll post a night position. So we do have, or they get promoted or they transfer departments. Um, so we do have a lot of openings um, and they're kind of constantly changing. So I would definitely say check the website, um, nvrh.org and click on the careers button for any of the um, opportunities that we have currently. Um, always feel free to reach out to me personally. 802-748-7312 um, is my direct line. Um, I'd love, you can also send me um, an email, H dot S P I N N E Y at M V R H dot org. Um, with your resume, we can talk through some positions that you're looking for, looking um, into what you're interested in, um, kind of keep in contact. That way, if something comes up, I can definitely let you know about it. Um, our benefits are really amazing, top notch, um, some really great benefits that we have to offer. Um, it's exciting, it's fun, uh, where it's always changing, um, pretty busy, and we are a community within the hospital, um, but we're also really um, embedded in the local community, um, which I love and I know that's why a lot of people want to work here to give back to the community. Um, so just, you know, if you want to come work with us, reach out. Um, it's fun, exciting, always new, challenging, um, and we'd be happy to have people um, who are interested in giving back to the community and interested in growing in their careers with us. Great. Thank you, Heather, and, and thank you for to NBRH and, and yourself for taking the time um, this morning and I guess now this afternoon. Um, Eric, I guess same question for you for you guys um, at Canterbury. Um, you know, any final thoughts and um, just at about working for uh, Canterbury Inn and um, just I'll, I'll leave it to you to give some final thoughts. OK, well, it's one thing I noticed in my notes. I did forget to mention we also have paid vacations. Um, <laughs> that's always important when I look at a job. I like to take vacations. So um, so we do we do offer that for our full time employees. Uh, Canterbury and we, we are we, we're we're a pretty close family. Uh, when we hire folks, that's what we look for is someone who's really going to fit well in our family environment. Um, we we like we love meeting new people we you know we we welcome new people into into the family uh, but we're always looking for that person who who cares and that's that's a bit that's a big piece we can if you care we can train you to do whatever we need to get done um and we know we know that that's been a more effective model for us uh, than hiring someone who's a great housekeeper but maybe doesn't really fit in or have that same that same sort of that same family feeling to their job. We work really hard to, to help everyone schedule work around their lives. Um, uh, we have 12 hour days, eight hour days. We have an evening shift, night shift. So 
we, we worked really hard to to help to help make it workable for everyone um, in each of their situations and try very hard to make all the accommodations we can um, to to get people the time off that they need or the hours the working the hours they need so that that's that's really what we do we we care we want we want someone to be part of our family um, I did post in the in the the meeting chat the contact information for us uh, info at canterburyin.org that will get you to all of the that will get you to me and our and our other director our nursing director who look at all we have to look at all applications for um, uh, for hires uh, together uh, as part of our business plan uh, and it's more importantly if someone applies for a nursing position the nursing director definitely has to be involved in that process uh, but uh, what I can say is the application itself isn't as important to us we really focus a lot on on meeting meeting someone uh, we learn a lot more from from talking to someone in person than we do from a piece of paper we really encourage you to send along um, information to us we we post our jobs on our Facebook page uh, pretty regularly uh, and again, just just uh, just as Heather had said, knowing everything that you've done in the past is really helpful because if we might be having something that opens up in the future or we might say you've applied for a nursing position, but you have some some experience in another department, we know we could utilize you and you know we could turn our two part time positions into a full time a full time slot if we put them together and 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 have you working in two departments. Uh, so we we try really hard to make that happen for folks. So um, you know, even if we don't have a job posted, if you reach out to us, we always keep your name on our on our list and in our radar, so that when something does come up, we reach out to to the folks who who who've asked us what we have going on, uh, and and we 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 will continue to do that. That's great. Thank you. Um, you know, Eric and and Heather to you both. Um, you know. I've Andrea, it looks like Andrea had posted just a comment, you know, not a question, but I love how both employers are very supportive and recognize the employees want to advance and help them reach their career goals. I uh, just wanted to men mention that just to you both and um, congratulate you both on a on a job well done today and can hope you continue to, uh, um, you know, do well um, at your in your respective positions and um, and, and and with your company. So I uh, just want to thank you both for for joining today um and, and sharing about you know the great uh, uh work that you guys are doing in the saint jay area thank you so much absolutely thank you for having us yeah definitely um so just as we close out um as a reminder uh please feel free to um you know, follow up with both of these employers and go to our uh, Department of Labor website as we had posted um, in the in the chat. Um, you can also we'll also be sending out some uh, post event communications and some emails um, to everybody that had pre registered. If you didn't pre register uh, for the event, I would uh, just go ahead and, and register for the event. Um, you know, for the communications. Um, you know, on the Department of Labor uh, event page, um, and you'll continue to get communications about these and future uh, job fairs for the St. Jay area. So, as I said, uh, this has been this had been recorded, so we'll be sure to post that and share the link uh, to the YouTube video. Uh, but other than that, again, thank you, Eric and Heather, for joining us uh, now this afternoon, um, and we'll look forward to hearing from you again and um, seeing seeing everybody again soon um, at future events. And with that. Uh, thank you all and, and have a great rest of your day.